mainly we actually know short term mobility as part of a blended intensive program. Um, previously, of course, we um, we had a lot of students who um, who undertook or went on a short term mobility, but mostly in the frame of a winter or summer school. And winter or summer schools are uh, generally not part of the curriculum. So uh, what we knew from uh, previous years is that students who went on a summer course, for example, they never received uh, funding. So that is a, a, a big difference in the, the short term mobility now. What we have seen in the past two years now is that um, in the blended programs and for short term mobility that we have seen that the majority, and that is, it's, uh, I think it's about 60 or 65 percent of the students who took part in the short term um, mobility, they are students, international students at our university. Uh, and that is uh, something that we struggle with a little bit in the sense that, of course, uh, we have equal opportunities for all University of Groningen students. But we also believe that international students already have a kind of international experience. So what we would like to see in the future, and there's a challenge for us, is to, to uh, really include more students uh, with fewer opportunities. So uh, students who can not go on a regular exchange, like a semester exchange, but for whom a short term mobility might be a solution or a way to um, uh, to have their international experience without going away for uh, four or five months. So uh, I think that's another uh, thing that, that is not entirely clear yet in the short term mobility. Is it only for students with fewer opportunities or also for other students and to provide for an additional international experience? So we see a lot of differences in uh, in um, the program countries in Europe and it also also for the blended intensive programs but I think for short-term mobility in general it sometimes makes it hard to agree with partners on what is and what is not possible and to what extent you can actually support your students and this differs in specific cases differs uh, between countries so um, yeah what we would encourage and um, I believe that or I know this is part of the uh, interim evaluation um, that was presented by the guild as well. Uh, I think more coherence in uh, interpretation of the rules and regulations of the Euro Commission, European Commission by national agencies would help a lot I think to uh, promote blended mobility but also to promote short-term mobilities. It's difficult, difficult to say. Uh, yeah, it's hard. I think if blended modules can become part of the curriculum or the curriculum will become much more flexible than it is at present in many cases, it will still be hard for students to organize uh, blended or uh, to take part in blended intensive programs. If they are part of the curriculum, and agreed upon with uh, partners that you have known for a long time. Uh, you agree upon automatic recognition. More students will be able to participate in these programs. Well, at the University of Groningen, we already have a, a policy for staff traveling. Uh, our staff is allowed to travel uh, by plane only if uh, the distance is larger than, than 800 uh, kilometers or our travels take longer than, than nine hours. Uh, another thing, yeah, what, what um, uh, we have seen in the past, uh, we, we were part of a, a pilot project in which students could um, uh, uh, buy um, an interrail pass uh, with a with considerable discount. Um, and I think that would also be a nice idea if the Commission would offer that to Erasmus Plus students, for example, maybe to all students in higher education, whether or not it is within uh, Erasmus Plus or not, uh, uh, to be able to, to purchase an interrail pass at a discount.